Then, if we visualize modified duration, then modified duration can be visualized as follows. I take a price yield diagram. So on the vertical axis, we have the price. And on the x-axis, we have the yield to maturity. Now if I take the price function, then we know that the price function of an option free bond will exhibit positive convexity. So let's take here the yield to maturity zero. And let's take here the bond price P zero. Now, in order to visualize in this price yield diagram duration, we know that duration, so if we go here to this point, P0 yields to maturity 0, then duration or modified duration, that is the change in the bond price divided by the bond price divided by the change in the yield to maturity. So that means we can now visualize modified duration here at this point here that's nothing else than the slope that we have at this price function at the point P0 yield to maturity 0 and the slope that we have at this point here can be visualized with a tangent and along this tangent we have the same slope as we have here at the point P0 yield to maturity 0. So we can take the slope here, the modified duration, and that means that the, the slope that we have along this tangent line would be the same as the modified duration at the point P0 yield to maturity 0. Now we can take a change in the level of interest rates up and down by the same amount. Let's say we have a decrease in the yield to maturity by 100 basis points. If we calculate now the price using modified duration, then we are coming up with a price, I call it price minus here. Yeah? The price that we can observe in the market would be higher, that would be a price then I call it P minus minus. Why would we come up with a higher price in an environment of falling interest rates? Because if you look at the Taylor approximation function, then the price change of the bond equals minus duration if you like, minus modified duration times the price of the bond before the change in interest rates times the change in interest rates. And then we have to add to it 1 over 2 times the convexity of the bond times the price of the bond times the change in the level of interest rate squared. So that means if you're just calculating the price change of the bond using duration, we will not come up with the price of the bond that we can observe in the market. Why? Because if duration, we're just measuring the linear relationship between the bond price and the yield to maturity, but this relationship is non-linear. So that means we have to add here to come up with the price that we can observe in the market. We have to add here 1 over 2 times the convexity times the bond price times the change in the level of interest rate squared. Or if you like, we have to add the convexity. Okay? So that means if interest rates fall, then we will underestimate the price change using duration. Why? Because the price change obviously would be higher than the one that we have just measured with duration. Then, if interest rates increase, so the yield to maturity goes up, let's say again, plus 100 basis points, then if we measure now the price change using duration, we would overestimate the price change compared to the price that we can observe in the market. The price we observe in the market would lie then on the price function. I call it P++. So therefore, if we use duration, if interest rates increase, we would overestimate the price change, whereas the price change in the market would be lower. Again, we have to correct the price with 1 over 2 times convexity times the price of the bond 
times the change in the level of interest rate squared. So please note here, if interest rates fall and we use duration to measure the price change of the bond, then we will underestimate the price change with duration. On the other hand, if interest rates increase and we measure the price change of the bond uh, using duration, then we would overestimate the price change. So for this reason, in both cases, convexity is positive and must be added to the first term of a Taylor approximation function to calculate then the price of the bond that we can observe in the market.